So today I'm going to do a uh, review of the Hatsan Bull Boss. This uh, is a 25 caliber Bull Boss um, in walnut. It's got the walnut stock, sort of laser etched in there. The first thing I noticed when I picked this gun up uh, was the feel of the handle. I'd never felt a handle quite like that before. Really, really smooth. Feels really good in your hand. You can see it's all molded and everything. Um, the other thing that's cool about it is it has a s attached uh, moderator here, so you don't have to worry about any sort of legal things with that. It comes with three scope rails there. Uh, the other cool thing is, like the FX Impact, it has the cocking mechanism right here, right by your shooting hand, so you don't have to move your hand at all. It's not back here like with some bull pups. It's ready to rock and roll right there. It has a 10 round magazine. Uh, the other thing I liked about this gun was that it has your standard Weaver style, Weaver size uh, 22 millimeter scope rail on it, but then it also has, you have the ability to put the dove's tail size, smaller 11 millimeter on top of that. So either one, whatever scope rings you got on hand, you'll be able to attach a scope on here. Uh, I did find though that the scope is a little bit low if you just mount it directly on there like that. You'll either want some tall rings or uh, some sort of a riser mount, maybe like a half inch riser mount, uh, so that I did find I had to tuck my head a little bit to get a good sight picture, so I definitely want to get a riser on this thing. The other thing I liked about the Bull Boss is it came in this uh, pretty nice cardboard uh, box with a carry handle. And then when I opened it up, uh, it has nice foam padding on each side, so you could actually throw your gun in there. It fit in there with the scope on it. That's without a riser mount, though. Um, fit in there. And uh, it came with this white box that had uh, a degassing tool, which is cool when you're going to put a regulator in it. You're going to need that. And it had two, probably 10-round magazines, some O-rings, and some other goodies in here. The other thing I liked about this, um, this gun was these magazines are really easy to load you can actually just kind of put them in there like that and then you just push them in they're similar to my walther rotec mags that i had and they you can load them really fast and easy now it did also come with a fill probe that's one thing i forgot to mention but it's not going to have the uh one eighth quick dis disconnect foster fitting so you want to order one of those off ebay or whatever this was like 4.99 and then you'll be ready to go. So this is kind of a cool way to make a target if you're in a hurry, especially is just grab a box and uh, you know tape it on the front and then put a rock or something in there. And uh, I usually flip over the nearest garbage can and uh, put it on there. But today I got a nice little pedestal here to shoot off of. You want to kind of have your target more or less level with where you're shooting at. If you're shooting way downhill or uphill, then it is going to throw your point of impact off a little bit. All right, I got my tank out here. So I always try to keep my stuff without getting dust on it, just so you don't get any dust in your air gun. And the other thing is when you're sighting in your scope, you always want to have it on the highest setting. This is on three. I'm going to go ahead and turn this to nine for when I'm sighting it in. I really like this bench rest. Mainly because when you're sighting stuff in, you can go like this and change it really fast and easily. It's called the Caldwell Stinger. And it was like $99 at Sportsman Warehouse. And uh, I'm glad I chose this one because it's really, really good. Especially for sighting in your rifle. The thing about these tanks is they last for 15 years. So this one, it says it's manufactured in 06. So that means it's going to expire... Uh, like they will no longer refill this in 2021, 15 years after this manufacture date. So when I, if you're going to buy a used tank off eBay, uh, what I try to do is I try to get 2008 or newer. So if you get a 2008 tank, you're still going to be able to get it filled at the scuba shop until 2023. So uh, if you're still into air gunning by then, you'll either have a new tank or if you buy yourself a compressor, you can actually use these for, you know, 20, 25, 30 years if you want. But uh, they just won't film at the scuba shop. You can still film yourself with a compressor. So I'm using some 
JSB King 25s. And so with these magazines, you probably want to push them in as far as they'll go. Make sure they're in here just so everything cycles good. So we're going to go ahead to load these. We're going to go ahead and that thing locks back right there. And you just do your bolt back and then slide the little raised ring right here goes rearward. Slide that back in there. Let that down. When that goes back, that means this thing's in there. And now you got your first pellet loaded. All right, so the safety on this is just right here. By your trigger finger, you push it forward and you're ready to go. Wow, the trigger pull on this is really smooth. All right, that was fun. I just shot 10, 10, 10 shots out of here, so it went by quick. Let's go ahead and see what the pressure is. After 10 shots, it's about halfway down in the green, so I'd say that's 10 shots. I'd say two magazines, probably time to refill. So once I sight this in, then we'll go ahead and see if there's any change in the point of impact uh, as long as you stay in the green zone there. So after... I think it was 12 shots I got this baby sighted in, so I started out up here when I had no idea where my scope was uh, pointing at because I just put it on. And then uh, I was down here and I just kept putting my crosshairs right here and then wherever it would hit, I would put my crosshairs here again on my uh, bench rest over there and then just tune my things down to the hole. Then I'd start over again anyway. I finally got it about right here anyway, so my last shot was right here, and I think I'm sighted in now, so this is 35 yards away. I just noticed another thing that's really cool about this gun is you can actually see your pellet in your magazine there, so you can look down there and see if you're out of ammo or almost out or on your last shot, and that is uh, very handy. All right, so this is 35 yards, and I still have not refilled my tank from when I originally filled it up which would be now uh, about 17 shots ago. So uh, this was my little group here at 35 yards, uh, not really trying. And I made a couple minor adjustments, a couple clicks over. And uh, when I started off after my fine tune on my scope there, this was my first shot. So I can already tell this thing's gonna be a tack driver. So uh, we, I finished out the magazine, 20 shots, and the rifle went from 200 bar to 100 bar. Uh, it's actually not down to a 100 yet still in the green zone. So basically two magazines and uh, the end of the second magazine the last four shots were right here um, and That could be me because I just sighted my scope in but you can just tell that this is a very accurate gun So there's a nice dust cover on this gun. You just turn it like that when you're ready to fill it and just uh, pop that pro right in there of course, with any PCP air gun, you want to fill it slowly. Okay, so just barely ease that thing on there. Careful, careful. Do it really slow because what happens is they get too hot. Uh, compressed air going too fast to a gun makes it hot. And uh, besides the fact that you could just blow the tank up by going too far. So we're just going to go to about 200 right there. And just leave maybe right around there. Ooh. All right, and then... And you're set. Remove that fill probe and you're good for another two magazines. How's it feel? Feels pretty well balanced. Well balanced, huh? Yeah. Cool. Looks yeah. cool. This is a, I don't know, six or seven shots at 35 yards and um, a lot of this being off is me because I'm pretty tired at this point and uh, I drank some coffee a little while ago, so I'm shaking pretty good. But uh, even on a bad shooting day, this is uh, a pretty good group, 35 yards. One thing you may want to watch out for is when you put this forward and you go like this, sometimes this thing will spring out and fly a little way. So just watch out for that. I would say that this is a really nice gun. The, the stock is beautiful, really smooth. It feels great in your hands. It's well balanced. Um, it's very accurate. And this is without a regulator. The other cool thing about these and the AT44 is that you can put a regulator in there super easy. Uh, I watched the video on YouTube. All you do is unscrew this tank, 
pull it out, degas it with the degassing tool that they give you with the rifle, and then you just screw the unscrew the cap of the back of it, screw the regulator in, put it back in, and you're set. The other thing I like about this gun is it has the cocky mechanism right here by your shooting hand. So for quick follow-up shots, it has three scope rails on it. So you can put your flashlight on the side and maybe a laser or a foregrip on the bottom there. Overall, I would say this is a really nice gun. And from what I can tell so far, it shoots as good as it looks. Moderator works good. It's not too loud for the yard. You can't hardly hear it, but it definitely has plenty of power. See how much power this 25 caliber bull boss has. We're going to go ahead and shoot this teapot and a half inch sheet of plywood. Didn't want to quite punch through uh, this teapot, but this thing's probably pretty thick. It looks like at 120 bar, which we shot the first time, and this is 200 bar. We're getting about the same result where it's uh, putting a good dent in this thing, but it doesn't go right through the stainless steel teapot. It did go through the plywood. Yeah, I cleaned through that. All right, now I'm gonna shoot a little bit at this 50 yard range and see what I can do. See if I can hit a, uh, a Lego man from 50 yards. We'll see if this Ninja Turtle can survive. All right, I got him in my sights. I'm aiming just a little teeny bit high just for the barely the top of his head. Let's see if I can do this. Now keep in mind this is uh, 50 yards away so we have no uh, diminished accuracy at 50. It looks like it's hitting just about exactly where it hits at 35. Oh well. He got hit in the knee so So it looks like I did get him pretty good and uh, I nailed him pretty much center mass. That was shooting through the scope cam so see what we can do without the scope cam. Well looking through the scope at 50 yards I put the crosshairs right about where I were at 35 and uh, I nailed him right where I wanted to and I blew him up. I can't even really find the pieces but um, that was from his leg injury earlier but uh, I definitely nailed him. The point of impact stayed the same even without a regulator from uh, 200 down to nearly 100 every time I shot it. So uh, one is that it hits almost the same place at 35 yards and 50 yards and uh, two it uh, stays the same. It stays right on target. In conclusion I would say that the Hat Sand Bull Boss is definitely an excellent buy for between six and seven hundred dollars. Uh, mostly due to it's just packed with every feature that you can think of and it's also very accurate so i would say that anyone who uh, bought this gun would definitely not be disappointed